and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because of the faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that past. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 when you finish worshiping God like this and you greet people it's not normal greeting mm. if you greet a woman whose baby is hanging the baby will come down if you greet somebody that's having a headache the headache will go down if you greet somebody when Mary under the anointing greeted Elizabeth John the Baptist in the womb God baptized in the Holy Ghost God filled with the Holy Ghost and Elizabeth herself got filled with the Holy Spirit and for the first time in her life she began to prophesy just a greeting just a greeting one of the most important aspect of worship is learning to host God because he's a sensitive person there are things he doesn't hang around with you have to know what makes him happy to be able to have his presence. A lot of people don't have the presence of God because they don't understand some of this stuff. Some of this stuff. And a dying man doesn't need prayer when God is present. Faith moves mountains, but the presence of God destroys it. He dissolves it. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Remember this scripture? It has been the foundational scripture guiding most of what I've been showing you in recent time. Now abide faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of this is what? Love. We've been talking about these three cardinal virtues. The three cardinal virtues. The first is faith. Faith is the one that gets us saved. Faith is what gets us healed. It does all the magic, you know, in quotes, that people get excited about. It can give you a breakthrough. It can turn around your situation. It gets answers to prayer. It gets people healed. It gets demons out of people. It can move mountains, and it's wonderful. But if you read the beginning of this chapter, the Bible said if you have all faith, that is your own level of faith can move all mountains, but you don't have love, it's still nothing. So faith is important, but it's not the most important. Then the second is hope. Hope is looking forward to the coming of Jesus and all of the wonderful things that we're going to enjoy when he comes. All of the wonderful things. Those things are more than what we can get by faith. Faith gets you things now. Hope gets you things then. Those things that we are promised in the scripture that we cannot handle now, we can't enter into it now. That's what the Bible reserves as hope. We expect them because they will become reality when he returns. Anytime you are believing God for something, and you push it away into the future, you are not operating in faith, you are operating in hope. It tells you you are sick, that you can be healed. You say, I know, I know God heals, he will heal me one day. You are not going to get that miracle. People who operate in hope don't get tangible results now. Because they always put everything in the future. But there are some things in the scripture you cannot put into the now. It will come with the coming of Jesus. From that moment, they will become reality. One of them is a rapture. One of them is the resurrection of the dead. One day we're going to be united with all our loved ones that died in Christ. Can you make it happen now? No. One of them is that one of these we're going to be clothed with immortality. But next time you see them shooting gun or whatever, clear because you, you are not yet immortal. Huh? But then, if there are twin bomb, you can be coming.
what faith can get us now is tiny. For example, it can get you healed. But then it's not just healing. You're going to be clothed with immortality. It's not just that your body will be healed. It's beyond healing now. Your body will be, will, will be raised into the state where you can never be sick, can never die. Now, let me tell you, because Christianity is today, there is a lot of focus on the faith side of the cardinal virtue. We want to get married, so we care about that element that can get it now. Pastor, call that husband. I want to see manifestation. I want a job. So, it's faith that gets the thing. And faith provides resources. It can get you prosperity. It can get you a job. So, pastors focus on that. But the problem is, to create a healthy Christian, you need to build them on the three cardinal virtues. It's like an aircraft. An aircraft needs to fly on two wings, like a bird. Not on one, it's going to crash. When you build believers only on the now, and you disconnect them from the eternal, you are going to end up with carnal Christians. You will have people that you wouldn't know the difference between them and the ones that are not saved. That is what is going on in Nigerian church. The Christianity in Nigeria has reduced to what we can eat, what we can deal with here, solving our problems, killing our enemies. You know, before now, it's native doctors that people go to when they have enemies to give them something to deal with the enemy. Now, it's like the God of New Testament is a killer God. You take the person to him and report him and the enemy is killed. Is that representing Christianity well? No. Am I saying that our God is not a consuming fire? No. Don't worry. I want to say this ahead of time. If you have any headache, any problem, when we share the grace, come around here, we'll get it solved for you. We'll pray for you. God hears and answers prayer. He answers prayer. If you are sick, you'll be healed. But life is beyond that. Life is beyond that. Hope deals with the coming of Jesus. And now, faith gets salvation and all of the riches of our redemption. All those things, healing, deliverance, and the rest of them. But hope is what produces purity. First John chapter 3, verse 2. Epistle of John, just before the book of Revelation. I want us to do that first. Verse 1 said, Now we are the children of God. Verse 2 said, It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This we shall be like him is hope. It's not faith. There is also we are like him under the teachings of faith. Let me show you that one. First John 4 verse 17. Show it first, then we'll come back here. 4 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we where? As he is, so are we where? In this world. Say with me, I'm already like Jesus. Say it, I'm like him. But you have to understand what you're saying. When you say this one, you're talking about the born again experience, the recreation of your human spirit. If you have truly received Christ, inside you are like him. Outside, are you like him? Are you immortal like him? Are you glorified like him? Can you pass through walls like him? Can you travel through space and time like him? This is faith. It comes with salvation. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. All things are passed away. When I receive Jesus, a change of cause inside me that makes me like him. He is the vine, I'm the branch. The branch of a vine should look like the vine. The branch of a mango should look like mango. Of course, the branch of a mango is mango. But look at chapter 3 again, verse 2. He said, where he shall appear, we shall be like it. That one is hope. There is no amount of fasting that can make it happen now. 
because what he's talking about is the redemption of our body when we're going to be transfigured and we're going to be glorified like him. The next verse, three. Here is the point. Every man that had this hope, have you seen this is hope? Purifies himself even as he's pure. Hope produces purity because everybody is not going to heaven. It takes purity to see Christ. It takes purity to go in the rapture. It takes holiness to see God. It takes holiness to see God. You cannot go to church and kill people like the man outside and then think because you attend church that murder is different inside church or than outside church. You cannot go to church and maybe profess Christianity and then you lie against people, you know, cheat people, like the other man who is out there, who is not born again. And then you think maybe the sin has changed because you, you do your own inside. No. No, my dear. The only difference between you might be that you may hear something that might be useful to you, that might lead you to repentance. But minus that, if that repentance does not occur, you're going to end up in the same place with that man. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Look at it. I dare you to believe the scriptures. Ministers need to start saying the truth as it is one more time. Follow peace with all men and with holiness without which what? No eye shall see God. Now, you see, people who, when you don't teach people hope, you're only teaching them faith. They will be prospering here. They will be breaking through here. And when they die, we'll go for the barrier and say, our brother is with the Lord and the brother might be in hell. When we don't preach about the coming of the Lord, about the judgment seat of Christ, that every believer is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Before God judges the world, he's go, he said judgment must begin in the household of God. You cannot tear this verse out. So that's why hope is more important than faith. After faith, all of them are important. But in the rating, faith is at the foundation. Hope is at the next level. But the highest is not even hope, is love. I will tell you why in a minute. Faith gets you saved. Hope gets you into heaven. Or do you want to finish doing salvation here, casting out demons here, and go to hell? Let me show you what faith can do. But without hope, it can end up in disaster. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. The doing of God's will is very important. Look at the next verse. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? That's what First Corinthians 13, if I speak in tongues of men and angel, I have not love. He has profited me nothing. He said people can do all this and it's in his name, not in the name of demons. And in your name cast out devils. In your name done many wonderful works. These wonderful works are miraculous works. And I will say to them, look at the next verse, I never knew you. Then I profess to them, I never knew you. Why would he say that? How can you say that to people who have been born again, using your name to help people? How can you tell them this kind of thing? Say, because depart from ye what? The problem is iniquity. They are committing the same thing. Nigerian Christians today are as corrupt as the unbelievers. That's the problem. We have them in politics. They do the same thing. They carry the same money like the unbelievers. And they come out and tell us, um, but what is born again if the sword has lost its servant? When the scripture said, if anyone be in Christ, is a new creation. That's new birth. That same scripture also said, all things have what? Passed away. Today's whatever, because we have stopped preaching the elements. Something that has three mixtures produces the result. We have removed two. We're only emphasizing one. And so it's not producing the impact. Instead, we are multiplying fake conversions. 
you do business with him we're going to share 60 40 halfway he changes it and he's claiming either 80 percent of the profit because he has seen money and he goes to church and he's born again what kind of christian is that 